what is going on guys welcome back to another swift video in today's video we're going to be talking about core motion and specifically how to get the accelerometer and gyroscopic data out of a user's device so things like the rotation tilt orientation this is used pretty commonly with things like racing games where you know you tilt your device to control the vehicle so on and so forth it's super simple super easy if you're into it, if you're excited, start by hitting the like button. If you're new to the channel, welcome. We do a bunch of iOS and Swift things here. So definitely hit subscribe if you haven't done so already. Get Xcode started, get pumped. Let's talk about some motion data. All right, we're gonna begin by opening up Xcode and creating a new project here. We wanna stick with the app template under the iOS tab. And let's give our project a nice name. Let's call it Acceleration Example. Make sure your language is set to Swift down here, of course, and your lifecycle is UI kit. Go ahead and continue. Save the project wherever you'd like. The first thing we're gonna do is expand our Xcode window, close this left panel, the right panel rather there, and we're gonna jump into the view controller file where we will be writing all of our code. Now, the first thing I'm gonna call out here is you can't actually test this on a simulator uh, for obvious reasons of you can't really get accelerometer or gyroscope data, but we're gonna write the code out regardless. So the first thing we need to do is import a handy framework that Apple provides us to interface with all the motion data from a device. And it is called Core Motion. Super creative, I know. The next thing we wanna go ahead and do is get the manager object out of this framework that we use to further get the data and start getting updates. So the manager is called a CM motion manager. So I'm just gonna call it a manager. We're gonna define it up here as a CM motion manager, just like that. And now all we need to do is basically start uh, the updates for whatever data we want. So we tell the manager start updates for the gyroscope or uh, there's a magnometer in here also, which I always say wrong, or the accelerometer. So we can say manager, and we can start typing the word start, and you'll see there's things like start gyro updates, start accelerometer updates. We're going to stick with this. Now you might be wondering, how do you actually get the data from the accelerometer out to your app? So things like X, Y, and Z, uh, based on, of course, how you're tilting your device. Uh, and it's super simple. Basically, you would say if let's the data is manager.accelerometer data. And you can go ahead and use it. Now, on this data, there is a uh, acceleration.x, y, and z, as you would expect. The reason that it's optional is because you might not have a latest rating, so you definitely uh, need to unwrap it. And the other thing I'll mention here is, which is a little strange, of Instead of using a delegate or a data source to get this uh, information out, you do need to check it manually like this. So if you're in a app where perhaps you have a game and you wanna move a character based on you know, the tilt of the device, if we think about something like a car racing game, something like that, what you'll need to go ahead and do is do this check over and over again in a timer. So I would do something along the lines of timer uh, schedule time uh, interval. So we want a time interval and we want it to repeat with a closure. So here we are gonna say, uh, let's say this repeats every second, true for repeat. And what uh, happens here is we call this block and from this block, we can go ahead and read uh, basically, you know, whatever the value is uh, for the accelerometer at that point in time. So you can get things like the X, which is data.acceleration.x. Uh, I'm just going to copy and paste it for the Y and the Z. So there is Y and there is Z. And then you can assign this data to, uh, you know, whatever you want um, to reposition things in your app. So X would be, you know, horizontally, Y would be vertical, and Z is kind of the Z axis, so like up and down. Um, you can compute these together to get a kind of feel for how the device is oriented. Now, similarly, like I mentioned, um, we also have a option to say start gyro updates. If I'm not mistaken, you can also get the uh, gyro data the same way. So we can say gyro data is the manager dot uh, gyro data. 
And if we have the gyro data, we can go ahead and use it. So on the gyro data, we get some other information such as rotation rate. So if we take a look at rotation rate, that also is X, Y, and Z. So you could actually combine uh, information from both the accelerometer as well as the gyroscope to get a very clear picture of the uh, device, its orientation and its movement in the real world and how the user kind of is holding it and tilting it and all that good stuff. So uh, that's basically it. That's how you would get the information out of uh, the motion sensors in your device. And of course, like I mentioned, make sure you put it in a loop or you call the, uh, you know, the, the optional property for the data as often as you need it. And I'm not quite sure if there's a stop function on here, but I suspect that there is. So there is a stop and there's apparently not a pause. So if we type in start, the other thing I'll leave you guys with is there is a uh, magnometer, which I always say wrong, um, that you can start updates for here as well. You can say start device motion updates and you can pass in basically what type of updates you want, uh, so on and so forth. It's pretty extensive. And always, of course, feel welcome to take a peek at the documentation and what else this guy provides. So you can also control things like the accelerometer update interval, which is actually a good call out here of, let's say you wanna get uh, updates, I don't know, every five seconds perhaps, and not every second. Uh, you can actually go ahead and uh, define that you want this every three seconds. Uh, keep in mind, the more you use these components in your device via your app, it's going to drain the user's battery more. So just be uh, respectful and cognizant of your users and, you know, what, what you're using in their device. Um, the same rule applies for things like reading location and all that good stuff. Just so your users are happy, they don't get annoyed with your app and, of course, so they don't delete it. So that is all I've got for you guys. It's a bit of a shame I can't demo this in a simulator, but hook up a device to your Xcode uh, environment and just give it a run. Um, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like down below. Help us out the video and the YouTube algorithm, all that good stuff. Comment as well if you have any questions, if you enjoyed, if you have any video suggestions. Love hearing from you guys. And of course, subscribe if you haven't done so already for daily Swift videos, iOS tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.